So the reason why I'm here is because this cooler is running a little bit warm. I just had it open a minute ago, but it's uh, not, not doing real good on temperature. And this is one I think we looked at the other day and kind of just set it a little bit lower. The coil looks clean. Uh, the vinegars and things like that, it wouldn't surprise if it's not, uh, it would surprise me if they're not uh, causing leaks. But uh, while I was looking at that, I noticed there's a lot of ice on the walk-in freezer. So if I go in here and take a look. And yeah, it's a little packed. But if you look in there, you can see that the coil is completely frozen. Same thing on the back side. Not looking the goodest. Not the goodest. So my best guess is the defrost clock's not working right. So let's go out there and put that into defrost while we're working on the other thing. Let's see if we can get a two for one special peep show here. And before we get into that, I've got a new toy here. This thing is so simple, it just makes me happy. It's just amazing. What we've got here is the door jam. You can find it at doorjam.com. It goes around the door jam so you don't get locked out. Well, this is one of those weird doors and it's got a kind of a difficult one to do it to. I'm gonna show you what we got to work with and how we do it. These kind of doors suck because they've got the hooky job there, which is no big deal. But the problem you run into, you know, you can hook it on there like that, but they want you to stretch it all the way over there, which kind of scares me because it's just like, like you just got it, you know? <laughs> don't really want to rip it up first day. But we're gonna do that. And that's what it comes out to being. I don't like doing that, but even though it's stretched out the writing, it works. So what they usually do is they put that little piece of metal and somebody kicks it out and then you usually get trapped. Uh, so it's gonna work We're just fine. This is uh, the same cooler as I worked on a while back. I was working on the walk-in cooler. This is on the freezer. Let's pop this baby off here and take a look and see what we got. Yeah, I would say this probably is a problem. That puppy is fried to the maximum gluteus. It is screwed. Well, we're just gonna have to shut this thing down. I don't know what in the world happened, but something, something just fried that puppy. That ain't good, not good at all. Uh, it looks to me like it even blew the circuit board. Look at the circuit board there. You can see it's uh, left and right wise, it's split out. I'm gonna say it's probably this one. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna have to get that replaced. I don't think there's gonna be any fixing that. What I'm doing here is looking at what terminal that is because I can't quite read that. I don't know if you can. It looks a little helter skelter there. But from what I'm seeing, it looks like it's probably the number three terminal. And number three is usually your defrost. Can I go over here and take a peeky poo here at this? Defrost heater, see? What I'm wondering, because the way that is, yeah, I mean, it, that is that is really bad. I mean, it got loose, so something happened, but I'm gonna make sure this is not like a dead short to ground. Maybe that's something that was going on, I'm not sure. But before I hook up a brand new clock up to it and blow it up to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't look like mice have been in here too much here. I mean, you can see there's something going on here, but it just, uh, I don't think a mouse got in there and caused it from what I can see. We'll go ahead and get this yanked out of there and see if we can start trimming up some of these wires and make them, make them a little bit better. You can see we have a little bit of splatter in there. It burnt that wire feeding it, which, you know, that don't necessarily mean it was dead short. You know, one section could have been loose and cause it to feed like that. Uh, kind of a crazy day, you know, we just got back from Florida. Uh, uh, two days ago it was 87 85 degrees down there and I'm here in Ohio it was 14 when we came into Detroit and here it is today it's 54 degrees tomorrow it's gonna be 61 and then at the end of the week it's gonna be below uh, 30 gotta love Ohio weather anyhow let's uh see if we can get this thing undone and get it juiced up we'll start checking uh, resistance to ground on some of these other wires that thing got so hot holy crap it just dripped <laughs> dripped down there this is a um, OEM clock, 
you see me replace this on a call a couple times ago. Anyhow, comparing it, uh, it's exactly the same XM3 fan. So this is going to match up to that one there. What I'm going to do, go ahead and copy the labels to my labeler here. That way I don't have to like mark them down. It'll make it a little easier. And we'll have that for later. And then, uh, then I'm going to start testing those wires. Make it a little easier to test too because this one here doesn't use uh, crimp downs. It has its own little terminal block. So that'll make it a little easier. I went ahead and repeated it. Uh, X and four and uh, four there. And obviously we have our three here. We'll go ahead and chop those off. You can get a better look at it here. You can see it's had a bad day. It ate her up pretty good. You got your little jumper cable there. Yeah, she definitely is crispy critter. I think it just kind of reminds me purely of a loose connection because if that was a uh, dead short, it would just blown and trip the breaker. Unless we got a bad breaker. You can see these resistors here got super hot. Unless we got hit with some crazy freaking uh, surge of some sort. But this thing is toast, literally. I went ahead and checked resistance between three and N on there's two different ends here. When I found the combination, which is the brown and this red one, those are the heaters. They came in at about 33 ohms. So it sounds about right. And I checked both of them to ground. I had nothing. So it seems like we're fine. I bet we had a loose connection of some sort. I'm going to go ahead and wire it up and we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, I did my due diligence here to make sure that it wasn't just, uh, you know, a dead short. And currently it does not appear to be. Now, if there's something loose or something like that, we'll have to double check for that. But for right now, it's it just seems to be the, the issue is just maybe a loose wire or something. Moment of truth. Now let's put her in defrost. There she goes. Make sure she pumps down. Should be able to go off of that wire right here. No interlock, so it can run either or. So we've got the heaters technically on right now. It's pumping down until that pressure switch here cuts out. Okay, just hold them steady there. Pushed a couple extra in there. We'll let it go off on timer and then we'll throw it back when we get done. It's still running. I got it uh, set up to run as long as it needs to until it finally kicks out on that uh, defrost termination switch. Got uh, most of our mist cleaned up here. I'm gonna leave this off until I'm ready to leave, which I've gotta go right by it to uh, get to my truck. But let's go downstairs, take a look down there. Yeah, it's got a ways to go yet. It's not, not there. Oh yeah, it's, it's working. Power spray. Looks like all the elements are working. We'll just uh, let it do its thing here for a little bit. While we're doing that, let's go over here and look at this cooler. Now, the other day, a week, a month ago, whatever, a day after a month ago or two months ago, whenever I was here, which you gotta be careful of that, um, I cleaned the condenser off, made sure it was clean. Just knowing the history of how these things are, it would not surprise me if it's low. Hate to jump into that. It has a digital control on it, which they've already got that cranked down. That's why unless the sensor is out of whack, then, you know. So let's go ahead and see if we can get into here. There's a way to get this pulled out. Looks really nice. I think we're gonna have to move it this direction to be able to get into it. You're not gonna be able to get a whole lot there. We don't really have a bunch of water in the pan, really almost none. The compressor's pretty hot on top, hotter than I care to deal with. The pan is running, the compressor's running. That's rattling enough to drive you nuts. You can tell this has been wet in the past. Let's clean out that trap. You see it's getting some accumulation there, but it's giving me every sign that it's low on refrigerant. I mean, it could be the controller, but we've had a few of those go bad. It's 
not been violated by anybody yet. Let's see if I can feel the suction line. Yeah, it's not very cold at all. It probably has a leak. Let me shut her down and get a little sniffy sniff and see if we can find a leak on this thing. Yeah, I've seen worse. It's not that bad. I was able to blow through that and break it loose and then all the gunk came out. So let's go ahead and shut this thing down and see if uh, we can get a, a signal on the leak detector of any sorts. It's uh, running like it's doing. It's low on charge. I'm going to remember that suction pressure is going to be super, super low. And there's not going to be a bunch of refrigerant in the evaporator. I mean, there will be, but not, not like if it was shutting off. You guys know how I like Inficon, whether it be DTEC 3 or Stratus. I figured it's time to give this thing a little try. It's been sitting there for a while. Got some interesting information from some of the sales guys. Said that this might be just a little more sensitive because there's less tubing in it. Uh, let's take a look here and see if we can get a sniff -a You can just smell the vinegars big time. Definitely can smell the vinegars. Ah, look at that, buddy. <laughs> Love it. That's a surprise. They, I mean, you can smell this vinegar big time. I don't know what it is about the vinegars, but it makes them leak like a sieve. Real surprise. And I, oh, wow, she's starting to get unhappy back here. Yeah, that's in the coil that's doing it. Yep. Yep, yep. I'm going to do it with both hands. That way I can be certain it's in the coil and not just one of the lines. We're on the fins. Yep, pretty bad. We can go ahead and yank it down if we would like, but what's the point? This is 134A, 12 ounces. Just spoke with the guy that's in charge of things. He said, just go ahead and recharge it. Uh, probably ain't that bad. Okay, so we are good to go on that. I went ahead and got a solder on tap there on the suction line. This is the way I like to do it. I swedge that quarter inch and then put it right on the uh, suction line of the compressor. It's a lot better than those clamp down pieces of junk. And we're gonna slowly add our 12 ounces to this. For me, it's always easiest just to recover it, start over, and just weigh in the charge. It's just the most accurate way to do it, especially on these critically charged systems. And if your suction pressure is still low after weighing in the refrigerant charge, you know that you've got a cap tube restriction or an inefficient compressor or something along those lines. Uh, that's why I do it, and when you're only talking 12 ounces, it's just the smart way to do it. Right at 12 ounces, we may have went a half an ounce over, which since it's leaking, not a humongous deal. Uh, right in there, about 20 pounds. That should drop here shortly. I kind of charged it in at a medium pace. I didn't want to slug it with liquid. Usually we're gonna run uh, 18 pound suction with a box that's at temperature, which it just dropped down. Or the TD that uh, they usually talk about, you're gonna have about 10 or 15 degree on some boxes. Uh, when they talk about that, it's the saturation temperature minus the box temperature. So the box right now is running 45 degrees. So if you take your chart for 134A and subtract 45 from 15, and then it should line up with your gauges there. Run about a 27 degree TD, which these boxes here, a lot of times they'll have higher ones. Uh, usually your walk-in coolers, freezers are going to usually be a 10, sometimes 15 degrees. So like this one here, we're running 42. You really need to, you know, get the temperature of the return side of the evaporator. But uh, that's just something to kind of go off of. Delta T versus TD. TD is your saturated temperature minus your box temperature. Whereas in the air conditioning world, we usually do a Delta T, which is your evaporator going in versus evaporator going out. With evaporators being so small like these are, that's why they usually go with the TD, air, air turbulence and things like that. It's just hard to get accurate measurements. From what I'm seeing here, it looks like we're running about the same suction pressure. 
like I said, we weighed it back to factory spec. Everything seems to be doing fine. Generally, if the cap tube is getting restricted, it's going to dive down there really low, if not into a negative. And uh, I went ahead and put a sticker inside here. That way, I have record and proof that, yes, I told you. Almost forgot. We need to check this freezer yet, make sure it's doing okay. We're up to five. We're gonna take a peeky poo at it. Looks better. That one's pretty clear. Looks to me like we got it. It's clean all the way across on the back side. Got that little bit right there, which we'll probably need to get that manually. All right, your pump sprayer is your fastest way to get this thing melted. I sat there and did it with the torch. The torch is just too slow. And then with the new type of refrigerants that are flammable, you can't use a torch and the only thing you can use is hot water. So we got that done. The reason for that is it will never melt on its own, uh, most likely. And then you're taking a chance of getting a call back. That's why I went ahead and did it. Did I want to do it? No, but I don't want to have to come back later because it grows again and they know that it was frozen and they would think that either is a problem going on still or it is an existing one that was never finished. So that's why I did that. Now the remainder of the coil and everything is clean. So that gets this part done. Let's go outside, button that up. Here's something to keep in mind too. The safety, It this one here don't must not work. So if that would have locked on me, I may not have been able to get out. It's easy enough to get past it here. Some of the higher end doors, you can't do that to it, but make sure you guys don't lock yourself out because there's nobody here right now. And that would have sucked. I would have had to bust the door. Also guys, like I said, this thing is awesome. So we just pull that thing back out. She's off and still looks like brand new. That right there didn't do it a good job, but you know what? It's made to be used and uh, it didn't hurt it at all. You can see it's in good shape. That's pretty awesome. Anyhow, this uh, system here, let's go ahead and set the clock on it real quick, which we're now looking at five o'clock PM time. So there's five right close enough to there and we are good to go. All right, guys, that's going to wrap this one up. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, if you would, please hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing. Check out our Instagram and Facebook page. And until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.